Today we're going to explore the potential of blockchain, of AI, machine learning, and the role that they can play in addressing climate change. And I can't think of four individuals better suited to lead this conversation. Let me start by uh, welcoming our, our panelists and introducing them to you. Jonathan Doton is the founder and CEO of Equity Lab. Uh, Equity is a stealth startup designing applied cryptography to reinvent the corporation, the corporate form for responsible AI. As a serial entrepreneur and investor, he navigates the intersections of media, tech, and policy. He's a senior fellow at Stanford Center for Blockchain Research and founded the Starling Lab for Data Integrity. Welcome, Jonathan. Thanks so much for having me. Megan Kilman, I'm sure many of you would recognize, is the co-founding officer of Filecoin Foundation and the Filecoin Foundation for the Decentralized Web. She was the co-founder and CEO of the biotech startup 3Scan, enabling big data analysis of human tissue uh, for critical diagnostics, drug discovery, 3D organ printing, and brain mapping, which is fascinating. <laughs> In addition, Megan co-ran an open data project in Jalalabad, Afghanistan, that organized and disseminated academic and military research. She's also very respected for her co-organization of the open source BIL conference and is a founding member of Women in Hardware. Welcome, Megan. Thanks so much, Megan. David. Daniel, you have a, a, a most unique background um, and uh, Certainly the subject that we're going to talk about today is, is one that's been a part of your focus for some time. For over 25 years, Daniel's been leading large-scale global transformation processes for both private and public institutions. News Console, Erasmus AI, is an innovator accelerator processing 250 million URLs per day, advancing media, investment, transportation, medical, social, and geopolitical outcomes. Daniel's also the author of three books on innovation, Game Changer, The Future of the Internet, and The Future of FinTech. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you. Dr. Alan Ransell is the founder of Filecoin Green. For more than 15 years, Alan has worked in sustainability and renewable energy, both as an academic researcher and a product manager, and of course, uh, as a good MIT alumni, he also has that co-founding entrepreneurial streak. Alan has a PhD in material science and engineering, but his practical business initiatives include reducing the energy needed to cool buildings, ARPA-E, DARPA uh, projects, and development of a model to determine the energy use of the Filecoin blockchain. Alan's also an advisor to the Global Carbon Reward Project and is an organizer for the Sustainable Blockchain Summit. So I think Perhaps the, the best way to begin this discussion today is, is by addressing the digital elephant in the room, if you'll allow me. So um, blockchain technology certainly have been criticized as unduly damaging to the climate due to the power it takes to simply run these systems. Um, not surprisingly, the decentralized web community is pushing back on this narrative. Uh, I'm very thankful for all that I've been able to, to learn from Filecoin. Um, and your supporters and, and those that have covered your work to date in this subject. Because I think what you're going to learn more about today is that decentralized technologies are actually being recognized as very powerful tools. And we can trace and verify energy consumption to help the Web3 space. So with AI and machine learning being leveraged for a wide range of sustainability initiatives, predicting, preventing natural disasters, to optimize energy consumption, I think the overarching question for our panelists to address is whether blockchain and, and decentralized technology are a further threat, or are they in fact perhaps the savior that's been sent to us to uh, support our, your respective efforts in, in climate change? With that, Jonathan, let's, let's start with you. I think um, I'm particularly intrigued with what the Equity Lab is doing. Can you share with the audience? Sure. So um, following on the promise that you're speaking about, we believe that decentralized technologies are critical to helping authenticate AI algorithms. And what that means is that we can now understand exactly what goes into those algorithms and then ensure that at each step as you ingest the information, you then transform it and then process it to create the AI algorithms, you know exactly what has happened there. And that critical piece of provenance 
is what we focus on. And what we find with Responsible AI is that it's actually, it's a team effort. And so the ability to bring more people into that process to uncover biases or to enrich the models, that's critical. And as people make those contributions, you want to trace that. And that's where we come in, to allow good actors to demonstrate what they're doing to help. How, how long have you been on this journey? Um, goodness. Well, it's, as a company, it's been about 18 months of really hard work. And um, what I'd, I'd be excited to talk to you about today is a 90-day sprint that Daniel and I just finished um, in uh, training an AI model uh, from the ground up. And, and we learned a lot. And we'll be happy to share with you a little bit about what it really means to apply, in the real world, responsible AI practices. Great. Well, let, let's make sure that we cover that in this conversation today, how you've collaborated together in, in that effort. Um, Megan, uh, you have a wonderful full perch. You certainly are, are one of the wise women uh, in this area of, of focus today. Um, from your vantage point, what are the most significant prevailing concerns that you have about environmentalism and, and how Web3 can play a role? Yeah, I mean, I think that the concerns that you brought up around blockchain, you know, I think gets a lot of fair pushback that it is a very energy intense process. And as we're looking into this future of AI, we're looking at another very computationally heavy, energy, you know, heavy process. And I think that we really need to be always thinking about how do we bring these new emerging technologies with all of their benefits into our lives in a sustainable way. At Filecoin, uh, we have been working for the last several years to make sure that all the files stored through the open source protocol of the Filecoin network uh, are able to be offset. All the energy used uh, is able to be directly calculated uh, in a way that can really be emulated by any other blockchain so we know the exact environmental impact and that we can mitigate it. And where, where do you think we are in that discussion? Are, are we literally at the forefront or behind the scenes? Uh, individuals like yourselves have, have been engaged and, and focused on this, but perhaps it hasn't seen the light of day that it deserves and that it's getting now? You know, I think there's a lot of attention put on it, but maybe not as much action um, as we would always want. And I think that conversations like this are the critical piece in making sure that it's clear to anybody developing an emerging technology, anybody working on blockchain, anybody working in AI, that this is, you know, climate issues are at the forefront. And that if we're not thinking about how to bring new technologies into the world in a sustainable way, that we're not going to bring those technologies into the world. I'll be interested as, as, as our conversation continues today to learn more about how you can leverage this dialogue that, again, is, is finding its way um, to, to the front stage here this week. How can you leverage that and, and share that amongst the stakeholders and influencers? But Daniel, let's, uh, let's jump in. You, you have uh, one of the most fascinating and, and diverse um, work portfolios that I think I've ever seen. Um, you've been at the forefront of, of scenario planning processes on technology, governance, education, the environment. Um, you're a prolific uh, writer, author, um, columnist. Tell us a little bit more about your work and, and maybe you can bring us to the present. So what, what brings you here to the stage today and, and is this the culmination of everything that you've done to date or are you just getting started? Uh, to start at the end, we're just getting started. and. Um, I think um, the critical reflection here is that we've just had the hottest year in 125,000 years. And, um, and the question that's in front of us is a capital reallocation of between one to five trillion dollars per year we're going to have to spend. And that entails a large amount of decisions underneath that. So which energy system does one go through? What is the interplay of intermittency of renewables, et cetera, et cetera. So all of those decisions um, need to be better informed by current science and by the best ideas possible. And so we're very happy here to at Davos um, launch uh, Climate GPT, which is a task specific large scale model um, that is dedicated to help decision support around um, climate change and using AI in a very, very different way than before. And to come to the earlier part of the question, spent you know, a quarter of a decade um, working with executives 
on specific decisions, so building scenarios in very specific situations. Um, and then at one point decided as an engineer and together with Equity Lab and Jonathan to build something um, that helps facilitate that same level of skill and the same level of insights um, that from a forward-looking scenario process, but democratize that um, in a very different way. And AI offers that opportunity. Um, Alan, Alan was nodding his head, and so it sounds like he's going to engage in that dialogue as well. So we'll come back around to that in, in a moment, Jonathan and Daniel. Um, Alan, maybe you, let's, let's start uh, with a little bit of background on, on Filecoin Green um, and carry us into what is the single most important mandate for you today. Sure, absolutely. We focus at Filecoin Green on two different things. Firstly, as Megan was talking about, how can we make Filecoin itself as sustainable as possible? How can we understand when you're storing data on Filecoin, where is that data being stored? How green is the electricity being used? And is that data center doing things like putting solar cells on the roof, making a very efficient data center, doing all sorts of things that can make that storage as efficient and as sustainable as possible? The second thing that we work on is what Jonathan and, uh, and Daniel were talking a lot about, which is how can we use this intersection of blockchain and AI in order to promote sustainability across the board? And there's a huge number of things that go into any claim around sustainability. If you say this product is made using 100% renewable energy, or if you say this project has preserved nature or offset some amount of carbon, you're gathering data from many different sources. And that data, like Jonathan was talking about, needs to be verified. We need to know the provenance of that data so that we can understand what is this claim really based on. And then there's another step, right? Because you don't just go from data to some claim. There's AI models in between, there's code in between, and all of that also needs to be verified. And the systems that we use today that are, are deployed for making most of these sustainability claims don't give you that full trail. They don't, they don't actually let you dig in and say, specifically, what is this number based on, right? What is the, how can I, how can I reproduce everything that goes into determining actually that, that like piece of information that I'm basing my claim on? And so we're working with a huge number of projects um, in order to explore what are different ways that we can, for example, um, use data systems, pulling data from all these different places to measure not just the amount of CO2 removed by a project, but actually what effect is that having on the local atmosphere? Working with a great company called Hyphen working on that. We're working on things like how can we use data from satellites and other sources to deploy capital in developing countries? So how can we take the, the you know, huge amount of um, capital that's being allocated right now for reducing emissions and preserving nature and give people the confidence that when they invest in a project in, say, Kenya, working with a company called Shamba doing this, if they give it to a small farmer that's actually going to have the impact and, and not just you know, notes on a paper in a PDF, but actually the verifiable impact that goes into that. Um, and so, yep. And, and has the corporate community been receptive to you as the self-appointed climate sheriff? I would certainly not call myself the self-appointed climate sheriff, but what we can do is develop tools to allow you to verify those claims that you're making. And so, as Jonathan was talking about, frequently an AI model is a black box. What we can do is let you verify the inputs and outputs of that black box and reproduce it and really understand how are we getting to these, these claims that we're making. I don't think any climate sheriff calls himself the self-appointed climate sheriff. So. Well, and I, I just wanted to clarify that, that I meant that to be a very, a very, very positive compliment. I, you and I were discussing in the green room earlier, in the absence of a governor of the climate, it, it, it falls on the shoulders of those that, that have the passion, have the desire, and, and the willingness to invest themselves in, in this cause. And, and so I, listen, I, I'd vote for you if, if it ever comes to that, to, to be the climate sheriff. If, if I could just um, uh, add one thing, which I think is really interesting about this dynamic, is that, for, first of all, I, I think it's important to, be, to level set here that the, the issue around transparency in AI is, is one that is critical. And, and it's ultimately, it can be solved. The, when, when we talk about trust in AI, we have a really clear starting point. We just want to know, like anything, let's say, that we eat, what, what are the ingredients, right? What goes into this? And what was the process in order to create this? That is a really simple concept. But here's the interesting thing. The, the paradox is this, 
that AI also creates synthetic information. It creates misinformation. It creates disinformation. So at the very point in which we have the most critical moment to understand exactly what goes into these models, right. the models themselves can muddy the waters. They can make all sorts sure. of problems. And so what we found is that you know, the, the very tools that are used to underwrite the trust within blockchain networks to mm. make them immutable, to establish uh, you know, the authenticity of a transaction on blockchain network, they can be used in other ways. And right. so what we've done is we've repurposed technology that's worked at scale yes. to underwrite trust for billions and billions of dollars every day that is transacted through right. these crypto networks. And we're putting it towards the cause of AI. And to say at the point in which AI becomes ubiquitous and at scale, can we create a similar level of trust? And that's um, that. Those of us that understand the core technology, not yes. the casino, of course, that surrounds all of this. Yes, that's what we're so excited about. And let's 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 segue from there into the project that the two of you have worked together on. Can you share a little bit more about that? Sure. Well, um, it's actually fortuitous to remember here that um, this all began when we were here in Davos, um, yeah. just down the street. Daniel and I sat down, and and you know, Daniel has been working for years on aggregating information. Uh, high quality information from across the web. And you know, his inspiration, he said, well, why, why don't we start thinking about ways in which we can pair the authentication technology that we're building with the incredible data and the AI insights that Daniel works on. And what we set out to build was not only the decision-making analyses, but, but also a foundation that would allow for a collaborative effort because really, at, with a planetary scale problem like climate change, we're all in this together. And so could we build a platform that would allow as many people as possible to aggregate high quality information and to do their part to help evolve the model, spot bias, introduce their own perspectives, be it uh, at a you know, first world country all the way down to you know, a developing nation. That's the type of authenticity that we want to establish um, from all actors. And Daniel, I don't know if, if you want to add, I mean, this is, in a sense, years and years of, of your work now coming to fruition. So. It's, it's been a fascinating collaboration because we come to this as big data. Um, you know, we have planetary scale data sets. We do a global ingest every day. And so a large block of that task is just getting stuff to work and the challenges of getting stuff to work at this scale. And so the collaboration with Jonathan on um, getting the insight that there is a there there in terms of task specific models so that we won't have general technology tends to diverge the automobile became the suv the motorbike um, the, the the luxury car the supercar these technologies diverge and we're at the point where we're going to see task specific um, ai models emerge at scale and so that there's a real opportunity here in building a climate specific model that has a depth of geographic knowledge, has a depth of knowledge um, on technological interventions that could change things. So understanding experience curves around batteries, understanding the, the role that hydrogen might play, et cetera, et cetera, and bring those things together, but then authenticate it and authenticate the process there too, and see this as a process in which one delivers an open model to help us all make very, very different decisions, which we're going to have to going forward. Can I add one quick thing? <laughs> yes, so remember. Actually, all of us have participated with this. So Alan's yeah. team provided the entire scorecard. So as we wanted to prove uh, yes. exactly how we were using renewable energy, which yep. indeed we found uh, hydro-powered uh, servers uh, that were being used for the training, the energy intensive process. Right. Solar, wind were also used um, for inference, et cetera. And then, of course, the storage. Um, the long-term preservation of all the data you know, resides mm -hmm. within solar power facilities that uh, the Falcon Foundation and others have been able to create and, and, of course, underwrite with this trust of the Falcon protocol so we know that the data hasn't changed. That's what we mean by a collaborative effort, right. is that it's transparent and it's inclusive. Well, and I know that's at the very root, Megan, of everything that you're doing with the foundation. Maybe you can, you can share. Um, the, the impetus for and, and where you are with the Filecoin project today. Absolutely. Um, Filecoin at its core is an open source protocol that is used for doing distributed cloud storage. Uh, things that are unique about Filecoin is that the content itself has a cryptographic hash on it. So instead of it being stored um, and found by its location, you're pulling the data itself. 
Um, I think, you know, really piggybacking off of what Jonathan was saying, because I think that the point, I think that the point gets lost sometimes that, you know, at its core, blockchain is a technology used to verify the validity of something. Um, I think that we sort of like, can lose the the crypto, you know, like the cryptographic uh, core when we talk about cryptocurrencies. But this idea of having something that is verifiable, that you know that you the truth of it, that you have the provenance of it, is so important uh, as we're you know dealing with global scale problems like climate change. And how, Megan, how do you and and Alan and I'll ask you both to to share. How do you collaborate most effectively together? Oh, I mean, Alan is lovely as the self-appointed sheriff of uh, climate change. <laughs> you can't let that. <laughs> Um, you know, the Filecoin Foundation works very closely with Filecoin Green, um, sponsoring many of the projects that Filecoin Green works on. And in turn, we use um, many of these, this technology that comes out of Filecoin Green to ensure that data stored on the Filecoin network, uh, that we know the electricity that's used, we know the source of that electricity, we know the you know, climate impact of the power that's being used. Um, so that we can make sure that we are able to do this in a climate neutral way. And both within Filecoin itself and within the space of projects storing data on Filecoin, there is this huge community called regenerative finance that the Filecoin Foundation has done a huge amount to foster and grow. And so they've invested money and given grants to projects throughout ReFi, really working at this intersection, right? How do we use blockchain and the verifiability that comes with these systems in order to promote sustainability? I also wanted to just key off of one of the things that, that's been mentioned several different times in task-specific models especially, which is that as we're looking to take a limited amount of money and deploy it as effectively as possible to reduce emissions, there are a huge number of stages that we need to go through, right? We need to, to plan what's going on and climate GPT and it can help a lot with that. We need to actually deploy these systems, right? We need to uh, deploy control systems. We need to verify the actual impacts of these projects. And AI models can help with each of these steps and what's going to glue them together, right? Take all these individual task-specific models and give us confidence that they're working the way that they need to. That's gonna be these blockchain systems and these, uh, these distributed data storage systems. Thank you, Alan. The clock is counting down, I'm, I'm afraid. And, um, I'll, I'll take that as my own segue. Um, certainly opinions vary on, on, uh, on how much time, but I, I think we can all agree that we're, we're marching steadily towards an irreversible position in, in, uh, in the case of our climate. Um, each of you is involved in, uh, in both re research, communication, and, and action. Um, I'd like to ask you for, and, and uh, uh, not intentionally named, but uh, I'm looking for a last gasp answer from you <laughs> as, we, as we move forward. Um, the single most important, if you could only do one thing, and Alan, I'll start with you, if you could only do one thing to have the most significant impact on climate change, what would it be? We could preserve nature and especially support indigenous and local communities in doing that. Brilliant, thank you. Daniel. Um, I'm gonna push back and say we need to do everything and um, helping people make better decisions at the scale of the planet. We think AI can play a role and Climate GPT is our contribution to help move that conversation. Tremendous, thank you. I think that we're past the point in time where we can develop emerging technologies without having climate first and foremost in our minds. And so I think that the single thing that we can do is always keep climate as the first thought when developing a new technology, such as AI and blockchain. Great, thank you. Jonathan. Open science. It is critical that we all put together the very best minds and have them be able to share their information. The idea that anyone could be an intermediary between that type of exchange of knowledge is, is a massive limitation on our ability to address climate change. And we, we've got to break those barriers and the silos that exist between the disciplines. Thank you. Well, thank you all. I, I've, uh, I've really, really enjoyed the experience, not, not only to learn more about you, but also research what you've been doing. And this was a fascinating conversation. Thank you for letting me be a part of it. This is wonderful. Thank you so much, thank David. You. Thank you for having me.